Hello and welcome to the first edition of the State of the Global Fleet Industry Spotlight video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. And this video series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders in the global fleet management industry. And today I have the honor to interview Rodrigo Monroy, who is the U.S. Sourcing Manager for Novartis based in Mexico City. And earlier in his career, Rodrigo had LATAM and APAC fleet management responsibilities while working for AbbVie and Merck. So today, Rodrigo will share with us some of the key best practices in regional fleet management that he's learned over the past decade. So with that, I'd like to thank you, Rodrigo, for joining us. Thank you very much, Mike. My pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're quite welcome. And I thank you for, uh, for taking the time out of your day to meet with us. So, you know, you have a unique situation where you, you work in procurement, and you also have direct um, uh, responsibility in the fleet function. So uh, I'd like to start off our discussion by asking, what role does procurement play in global fleet management? And what do you feel are the best practices in optimizing the partnership uh, between procurement and the global corporate fleet function? Right, Mike. And since I started my career in fleet management, I realized that procurement was very involved in fleet management operations. They can bring a lot of value, especially they can help in the globalization of the fleet. They can conduct uh, global RFPs for vehicle manufacturers, uh, also for leasing companies and even for insurance. And procurement can bring a, another perspective, another optics and help fleet management. One recommendation or as a best practice, I could say that communication between both areas is essential. And I could say that as a first uh, recommendation would be to define uh, objectives and set priorities. They can uh, identify if they want to focus on savings, if mm -hmm. they want to focus on fleet harmonization, the standardization of processes, or even if they want to work on a sustainability program. Once both areas work together and define objectives, they can set the strategy and have a successful program. Yeah, those, that's an excellent point. In fact, that is really the key to all of this in, in working collaboratively with the different stakeholders is communication. And I like the idea of what you're saying on working together to jointly develop these objectives and not only developing the objectives, but going beyond that and developing the strategy to achieve these objectives. And that's where you really um, have a harmonious working relationship between procurement and uh, the corporate fleet function. That's right. Additionally, uh, procurement can, can help and in the vendor management and base the relationship between the vendors and the fleet management based in the metrics in KPIs that help both uh, the vendors and the fleet management to evaluate the performance of the vendors as well. Yeah, that, that's really a key point because in many ways, it's like a three-legged stool. You know, it, it is procurement, it's the fleet function, but also the supplier or the uh, supplier base is really a critical part on bringing about the success. That's right. Okay, very good then. You know, one of the other things that you're noted for, uh, Rodrigo, is that you were one of the co-founders of the first ever Mexico Fleet Management Group. And um, I congratulate you on this. It's not something that's just happened recently, but uh, you took the initiative uh, to help co-found this group, which was the first in Mexico. And, and I was wondering if you could explain to our viewers uh, the purpose of the group and maybe if you can give a brief history behind the, its creation. Sure. Well, yeah, it is not recent. It goes back around nine or 10 years ago when mm -hmm. I was in charge of Latin America for the pharmaceutical company Merck. And I remember that at that time, uh, Joe La Rosa, who is a very well-known fleet manager, now retired, asked me to contact the Sleep Management Association in Mexico or in Latin America. Uh, he, was, uh, he wanted to know if we had something similar of what they had already in the US and in Europe. What we found out is that there wasn't any, but I knew the value of this group. So I started contacting fleet managers, first pharmaceutical fleet managers, and invited them to join a group to establish uh, meetings 
and the objective was to share best practices. At that time, we wanted to know what our other companies, other peers were doing uh, in, in terms of what kind of card they provided to the sales reps, to the uh, sales managers, even for benefit cards. We, did, we wanted to know if our promo program was uh, better or it's not as good as the others. So it, it was very valuable for all of us at that time. And let me tell you that it is uh, still in place, the mm -hmm. fleet, management, fleet Managers Association. We are more than 100 fleet managers uh, active and we share best practices still and we are friends as well. Yeah, very good. I didn't realize that it has grown now to 100 fleet managers. That's excellent. Um, you know, one of the initiatives that emerged out of the Mexico Fleet Management Group uh, was while I was working with the, as the chairman of the Global Task Force for AFLA, was a partnership between your group and the Automotive Fleet and Leasing Association. And this partnership was designed to provide multinational companies an opportunity to facilitate the dissemination of best practices uh, for both Mexican and U.S. fleets. And um, I was wondering for the viewers, if you could um, provide reasons why you felt that was an important partnership to uh, become a part of. Uh, at, that at that time, and at a certain point, we wanted to take this group to the next level. That's when we uh, started conversation with AFLA, and we understood that it was uh, beneficial for both ends uh, U.S. or global fleet managers to communicate with us for for us to share best practices, to uh, share our expertise uh, about the the Latin American fleet. Uh, as you know, it's uh, somehow complex, and share our our knowledge. Additionally, we also wanted uh, were interested in knowing what other parts of the world were doing. In this case, the U.S. and contacting the fleet managers which exchange uh, valuable information. And uh, we also realized that some companies were looking at Americas as one region, not North America and Latin America divided. So it made sense from both ends. We exchange information, we receive educational content, we participated in, still participate in seminars, webinars, and we are active participants in fleet conferences representing Latin America as well. Very good. Yeah, and hope uh, you continue um, to engage in um, in do these webinars and seminars uh, as you're doing right now. In fact, you're probably a good example of this um, um, collaboration and need to dis uh, disseminate information best practices because your current company, Novartis, European headquartered company, your job position is your uh, director of the corporate U.S. corporate services for uh, Novartis, and you're based in uh, Mexico City. So um, it's a great way where you're collecting information from three different uh, fleet markets and kind of disseminating and, and taking the best from each. That's right. And part of my uh, main responsibilities is fleet in the US. So it, it complements uh, the, the knowledge and the best practices from different uh, regions. Yeah, one of the, uh, your earlier experiences was working in the APAC market, uh, and that's Asia Pacific. Um, and you did that while working with AbV, I believe. Um, what advice would you give um, to fleet managers who've just been given this respon uh, this responsibility as a new responsibility? How would they? How should they go about educating themselves and um, uh, implementing uh, best practices in that area? Yeah, I, I could uh, give uh, uh, some kind, some advices to the fleet managers that have been appointed the Asian responsibility. One, uh, one would be to understand the culture and, how, and try to communicate uh, very well with, with their counterparts in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, try to build trust between both ends because it will allow the fleet manager to understand the needs of the fleet manager uh, of the, the Asia, uh, the needs, their concerns, their objectives as well. So once you uh, build trust, you can communicate in a better way. And another uh, recommendation that, that, that I could give is to uh, work on the strategy together. Uh, let them know that they are essential part of this uh, work 
on the fleet management and that uh, by working together, you would be able to define the correct strategy. Mm-hmm. Additionally, uh, it is very important to uh, communicate with the vendors, the incumbent vendors, but also the vendors that are in the market and in the region to understand what are the possibilities for your strategy implementation in the region. The vendors will be open to provide you insightful information that will uh, help the fleet manager. Mm-hmm. And and the third advice that I would give uh, to a fleet manager would be to also contact the fleet manager that already manage the fleet in, in, the, in the region. The, if you contact a fleet manager that already handles an Asia fleet, can provide you some kind of tips, some recommendations that will be helpful for you if it's the first time that you manage Asia. Yes, those, that's all excellent advice there. In fact, yes, you, you know, kind of building on what you were saying, you know, the cultural differences are, are huge. And simply by the fact that Asia Pacific represents so many different countries. So understanding those cultural differences and uh, because it's so easy to make a mistake, an uh, unintentional mistake uh, because of that. But that goes a long way towards establishing what you were saying there is a critical component, which is trust, uh, where you're collaboratively working with the fleet managers there and, and not dictating to them saying, this is the way it is. This is what's uh, coming down from the corporate office. And, and again, it goes back to that third leg in the stool that we talked about earlier, that suppliers, the supplier components are really critical in helping you to understand the marketplace. And, and you'll find, and based on my personal experience, I'm pretty sure it's similar with yours, you'll find that that group of individuals are very willing um, to help you and are extremely knowledgeable in providing the information that you're gonna need. That's right. Uh, they would open to, to share that information with you. And yeah, building trust is essential. And uh, knowing the difference between cultures, not not only between your culture and the Asian culture, but between the countries. It's not the same to contact a fleet, man- fleet manager in Japan than one in China, one in Vietnam, so and one in Australia, of mm-hmm. course. So, so yeah, uh, understand their culture differences and build on that. Yeah, very good. And you touch the other market that I'd like to talk about as we get ready to conclude our um, um, interview and discussion here is the LATAM market. You touched upon it earlier in, in you, by stating that it's a complex market, which indeed it is. Um, I was wondering if you might be able to provide for the viewers just a high level summary of some of the key challenges and also opportunities uh, that exist in managing a fleet in uh, the LATAM market. Of course, Mike. Well, yeah, as I mentioned, Latin America is a complex region. Uh, one advice would be to get involved in the different operations uh, between the different countries. You, a fleet manager, would need to understand how a, a fleet operates in Mexico, that it's different than one in Brazil, in, an, in Argentina, in that case, by in, in any other country. So that, that could be the first uh, step. And also the complexity of the, of the region comes uh, starts from the economical situation. Uh, it is, uh, for example, when COVID-19 started, the currencies depreciated around 30% compared to the dollar. And it, it, it is something that uh, we have been struggling with this since long time ago. So we don't know what could be the prices of the cars in the future compared with the dollar. So th- it could hit the budget. So be careful uh, when you budget your uh, your annual, annual budget. Understand the market con- concerns and characteristics. And uh, another uh, challenge is that uh, most of the the fleets are purchased in Latin America. Considering that the at least the interest rate is high, uh, some companies uh, uh, prefer purchase the cars. So to in order to conduct and obtain a report can be uh, difficult. You could, you could have different sources of information, your uh, fuel car supplier, your uh, maintenance supplier, insurance, and the cost of the cars. But on the other hand, the opportunities are big in Latin America. Uh, as, as you know, the big leasing companies now operate in most of the countries. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you can have a very good partner that can help you operate your fleet in, in all the region. So you can build the business case, see the advantages of having leased cars, of having a good partner that 
can uh, help you operate your fleet and take it to the next level. Yeah, this is invaluable advice, and I really appreciate you sharing that with the viewers. And we're going to be going into a lot of this information in a much deeper way uh, this coming May when um, uh, Baba Business Media holds its uh, virtual Global Fleet Conference. And then uh, we'll do it again in October, where hopefully we have an in-person conference in Miami, our, our traditional venue. But we've reached our allotted time, uh, Rodrigo. Thank you very much. Uh, you're a wealth of information. And um, thank you for the great conversation. And uh, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Mike, for the opportunity. It's my pleasure being here with you.